Richards. It's Calm Cafe time. This is a place we talk about or for small business owners, entrepreneurs, self-employed people. We talk about mindset, personal development, professional development, and I got something special for them today. Dreaming. I love that. And we were just talking about that. So I'll just give a really quick little antidote that um, four years ago when I got into the networking space and the self-employment, I had an opportunity. It wasn't you, Heather. It was someone else, I uh, admit. And I sat down. I did a, I guess a free session with them, and it was a dream coach. And she said, what's your dream? And I'm like, I don't know. I spent so long drifting in the corporate world, uh, having you know corporate goals and pers- professional goals. I had forgotten how to dream. Can you imagine that? Someone actually forgot how to dream. <laughs> and I had young kids and, uh, you know, they have like some really wild and crazy dreams. And then as an adult, we kind of put a cap on We put this glass ceiling on what we think that we can do. Or they, as we get older, we think that there's limits to what we can do. And well, I have my guest today. So enough of me. I have my guest today, Heather. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hurt your last name, but it looks pretty simple. But this quick, tell me how, how I pronounce your last name properly. Edgington. Edgington. And it looks pretty easy. So it's Heather Edgington. And let me I, I introduce you properly. So Heather is a dream coach. She actually has a, a background in, in in corporate training. So we'll we'll share that little funny story. It's pretty cool. And she is an author. So we got dream coach, author, speaker, and all around good person. And look what I have here. I have the book. And that's the awesome thing. We're going to talk about the value or the power of a book. So Heather's written Become Your Dream. It's never too late to love your life. And I'll put the promo right up front that if you want to learn more about what Heather does, just hop over to never, the number two, latecoaching.com and that's her website or hey we're on facebook just find her on facebook because if you're here she's here and that's the easiest way to do it thank you thank you so much all right and we've uh got to know each other a little bit recently we're kind of running around the same circles and i was at an event a couple weeks ago and i had the opportunity to win your book So I would have paid for it, but I had the opportunity to win it. And I actually, out of like the three or four books that were for me to pick from, I picked yours. So thank Thank you you. first. Thank you. All right. What has, let's get the, uh, some of the little technical things out of the way first, before we even get into who you are, book author, what does that, what is being a book author? What has it done for you and your business? Some people are like, oh, should I write a book? So right off the top, what has being an author done for you? Well, being an author has really made me visible to people in a different way. I stood up at a networking event recently and said, I wrote a book. And a man that I had never met, and we had never even heard of each other, walked up to me and said, become your dream. He says, I just retired. I'm an executive. I just retiring and I need help deciding where I'm going from here because I'm not done yet. And so he became my private client right there. And then for a 12 week coaching program, because I wrote the book. So that was a, that was a great thing. Um, the one thing I will say to people, cause I know in our, world of people there's a lot of people who are writing a book and they're talking about writing a book but they're not getting it written the action is not taking place and i believe that's because they don't know why they have not really sat down and defined why they're writing a book because if you don't know why you're doing it you have no motivation to do it i know people who have written books about topics that they don't want to do anything with. So they have a book and they don't get any benefit from it because they don't, they didn't think about why they were doing it before they started. Um, The other thing, the next thing you have to know with a book and what I finally decided was who I was writing it for, because you have to know who your clients are that you're writing the book for before you start writing the book. 
how you write it, when you write it, where you write it, all those things are not as important as why you're doing it and who you're talking to. So once I figured that out and believed that I could write a book, I'd gathered all the material um, and it had been sitting there and I wrote the book in two weeks once I believed I could write a book. So now I have the book. I'm writing an online course based on the book and my coaching program is this is the textbook, whoopsie, textbook for my coaching program. So to me, it's all integrated. I have a really great purpose for my book and it's really helping me. It's opening up a lot of things that were available to me. How book, big should the book be? As big as you feel that you need all the content to go in it. It has to be big enough to be a book. But it doesn't have to be war and peace. It doesn't have to be gigantic. So over 100 pages. That's what I say. I'm just I'm just checking to see how big your book is here. So 139. And I know just and this is I'm not a book publisher. I'm not a um, I'm not an editor. I know one of the guidelines is because, like, again, your book, Heather, it has this is bound on the back side here. If I get it lined up yeah. and you have this. So there has to be a certain thickness so that you can actually have a spine to the book as well as a certain thickness that does this binding. And I know it's around 100 to 110 pages is kind of the minimum that you can go for something right. like that. Right. So that's that's a little technical uh, piece that I've learned from my like, friends like Ash Silva and some of the guys at, and mm -hmm. John at, at Printing Icon. Um, I'm sure if I talk with my friend Doris Chung, uh, all in the book writing business, I'm sure they would say something similar or, yeah. Yes, okay. I agree. So a uh, wonderful points. And, uh, so I'll share a little secret. So this is, uh, this is like news, like this is hot off the news. I know it's, it shouldn't be about me, but I am actually in, I actually have found myself a book editor and I started writing a couple of weeks, about a month ago, I wrote the framework and then here she asked me all the same questions. I'm like, I just started writing the book and she's like, well, who, uh, why are you writing the book? Because I've always wanted to, and keep people for four years have told me to write a book. Who is the book for? I'm like, I don't know. Let me figure that out after I've written it. No, let's do it now. So those are all good things to say. Hey, if you're, um, so let me ask you, uh, when you wrote the book, did you did you get mentored? Did you do it on your own? How did you? Because I know you, it's it's your book. So how did you how how did you get through that exercise? Did you have someone help you with that? Well, I did have um, some help. Yes, I have been surrounded by people who have written books. So I got some unofficial um, mentoring from them. But the cover of my book, because a lot of people, you know, you want a beautiful cover. The cover of my book was designed by Amy Barroso at Creative Zoo because Amy does wonderful book covers. Yeah. And the content I got kickstarted on getting it done and really making progress through the um, content creation uh, workshops that Amy does with Jennifer Love. So Funny. they get people to come together and write and just write, hi, Tara. They just write what you're doing. So as a result, one of the results of me writing a book and many years of writing courses and things is that I am going to be in 2018 working with Jennifer and Jen and Amy to add a piece of dream building to the course content so people mm -hmm. Think about dream, their dream before they start to write, because that'll get them going. And I'm going to be doing the Western GTA workshops for the creative content program. So theirs yeah. is over up by the Don Valley, and everybody can't make it there. So I'm going to be doing the Mississauga West format of the same program. So I'm really excited about that. All right. Now, how about we share a little bit, because you shared a little bit at the beginning, just that you have this corporate training background and, and knowledge and experience from your previous life. And uh, so that, because someone's going to say, well, what, makes, what qualifies you to be creating your own you know, course content? So maybe just share a little bit about uh, your past life as a, as a corporate sure. trainer. 
Well, I started with Bank of Nova Scotia and Royal Trust when it still existed years ago. And I was a corporate trust officer in charge of online training for the bank. So I did all sorts of think, if you're old enough, think back to when computers were first hitting the market. One of the first courses I wrote, I told you, was an ATM course for the banks, um, for them to know how to have an ATM in the branch. And the bank managers were saying to me, no, 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 no. I'm not having a machine that spits out money in my branch. That's not happening. And I said, well, yes, you are. And before that, I'd written a course called Remote Control Operator for the tellers who had a computer in front of them. They had no idea. And they were calling IBM every day. I don't know how to use this. So I wrote a very simple course for them that was like this. Your computer is broken. Look up. Are the lights on in the branch? If the lights aren't on, that's why your computer doesn't work. If, you know, just the most simple of things that people had to know. So all my life, for the last 40 years, I have been helping people believe they can overcome and do new things. I taught, uh, I went across the prairie teaching school administrators how to add content to their websites when they had had other people doing that. So I was teaching them and they're like, I don't want to know this. And especially the school secretaries are like, I'll retire. I don't want to know this. And so I told them, look, I got gray hair under the blonde. There's gray hair. That's why they sent me, because if this old broad can do it, you can do it. If they sent some young kid, you'd go, yeah, anybody can do that. So that's the kind of thing, overcoming obstacles, past fear, believing you can do it. I've been doing that for 40 years in one way or another. And I got a master's degree in adult learning. And then I got all my coursework in, law, in online education for higher education. Um, so it's my passion. Helping people learn is my passion. I love that. And uh, hey, if you can teach someone to shift their thinking, you know, around technology in the bank, I'm pretty sure you should be able to think you should be able to shift someone's thinking about they need to be a uh, dream. Yeah, should be easy. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as easy. You still got to put the work in. You still have to do That's it. That's right. Yeah, I do a fair amount of butt kicking in this project. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, um, why dream coaching? Well, coming up on six years ago, I discovered that I was getting a divorce. And um, I realized that I was living in Texas. I'd lived in Texas for 27 years. And I thought, if I'm not going to live the life I thought I was going to live, I'm going to come back to Canada, where I was born, because my mom was all by herself in all of Ontario. She was all by herself. It was time for me to come back and be available. But also I just, I was what I say on stage and people have heard me say it was, I was old, fat, depressed and broke. I just had no direction. I thought I was done. But the women in my family traditionally live well, well past 90. And I thought, Oh my God, I got 30, 40 years to go. I cannot be done but I don't know what I'm going to do. So I Googled and I found, I Googled happiness and joy and direction. And I found dream building and I found my mentor, Mary Morrissey. And I had also, I had a lot of anxiety, but eventually I got in my car and drove down to Washington DC for a live event and just discovered my dream. I became a certified dream builder coach and the young man who did sign me up to become a coach was so lovely because I walked to the back of the room and I burst into tears and I cried in for about three minutes in front of him. He didn't say a word. He just sat there and let me cry. And then I said, he said, do you want to become a coach? 
And I said, yes, and I cried. But it was so awesome. My heart just opened up. My heart opened up, as Mary says, with so much love that it flowed out of my eyes as tears. So I became a coach, and it changed everything. Believing in myself, finding my purpose about why I love my life has changed everything. It's amazing because I didn't have a dream. And I discovered that if you don't have a dream, you ain't got nothing. So what is your dream now? My so you're dream living part now, of your dream, but what's what's the what's the where where are we going next? You you you've shifted a lot in six years. What's I have. The, where we still got? I'm sure you still have some work to do, or still have some things I've you have to do. I've got lots of work to do. I my dream, my purpose, as I have discovered, is to raise my spirit to become the most valuable positive and energetic spirit that it can be so that by the time I leave this world the energy that leaves my body is so much more wonderful than the energy that I started working with I want to do that by helping people I am helping people one-on-one -on -one with coaching I do events I've helped um, on other people's stages putting a bit of dream at the beginning of their events so people know why they're working on a project. I love doing retreats. I've uh, run three retreat retreats and collaborated with other people to do those, which was wonderful. Um, and I am now working on a new project because I want to do a large scale help the world. So I am doing an online system that's just going to kick off in the middle of 2018. We're developing it for people in developing countries who cannot get access to high end seminars and stuff. I'm going to do it at a very low end cost because I want to help people actually believe they can have more than they have ever believed in their lives. So that's hugely important to me to help people, to help people become who they should be who they, within their heart, have available to them, and they just don't know it's there. Wonderful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. All right. And I I'm will not... tell you, while people are writing their questions, my website, nevertoolatecoaching.com, if you put slash workbook on it, you can get the free companion workshop, workbook for my book. So all the questions that are in there, if you want to go and start thinking and figuring out your why and what people say is your dream, is what you're doing in alignment with your core values. But if I say to people in coaching, what are your core values? Half of them go, um. So I give them an opportunity to go through, figure out what their positive core values are that they do have, the ones they admire. And the one, the values you have that aren't so wonderful that you might want to get rid of. So all of those things, there's a lot of thought. Finding out who you are, why you're here, and what you would love is not so easy. Not so easy. I have a client who, when I asked him what his dream was, he said, why would I have a dream? He says, I I do this. I, I'm a drywall taper. That's what I do. And I said, but what would you love to do? And he, some of you may know him. He uh, has started a company called Travel Addict. And he is going to have people go with him to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, wow. Oh, look at Brian Paolo and you will see that you could be going to overcome your fears climbing a mountain in Africa. <laughs> All right, so I put awesome. I put the the second link is the right one. I put the first one, I forgot to put coaching. I just put coach. So the second oh, link okay. is the link. So it's coaching.com uh, slash workbook. So that should be the right one. Really nice. That is, that's amazing. Because um, sometimes we think, oh, but it has to be these entrepreneurs, but hey, people can still have dreams and, and do that stuff just in their, in their in their regular business or in their job to say, hey, don't it's not just entrepreneurs that 
You don't have to leave your job. You can stay in your job and just have stuff. Have a dream outside. park. Yeah. Wonderful. Because, you know, your your dream can be, it can be your career. It can be your, but it can be your spiritual, your emotional, your artistic, your fun loving. You know, you want to have a dream in all of those aspects. So, you know, yes, you have to pull it all together. Um, when people are talking about vision boards, I, a lot of people I know with vision boards, the way, one thing they have on there is pictures of money, 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 money. And then they have expensive cars. Teslas seem to be really popular. And they have uh, fancy houses. And what I tell people is step back. I don't want any of those on your vision board right now. I want what you would love. I want where would you be? Who are you with? Who are you communicating with? What are you achieving to change the world? I want how you feel. How's your energy? What are you doing for fun? What makes you laugh? All of those things. And if you are doing something that it combines all of that, then the money will come. And if the money comes, the car will come. The house will come. But first off, figure out what you would love. The money just pays for the goodies. So that's my attitude towards it. Hello, Gordon. Yeah, I, I love I love that. So I, I had written that uh, down. So I just, I'll type that into the notes. So I said, I had written it down to say, hey, no, no pictures of money, cars, or houses. Makes people just stop because otherwise all the vision boards look alike. Everybody thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's and uh, and we were talking earlier because I have a colleague that prints uh, that will print vision boards. Oh. So that's a great tip to to share with him because hey, if someone really wants it, they can put it on there, right? Like we're not saying that there's right or wrong, but I do agree because like one as a as a quick little note, personal note, I I think if I look over at mine, you know, there's no, I put a money tree. I didn't put a picture of money. I didn't put a like, money. I didn't put a big stack of money or I didn't put a dollar value. There's a money tree on mine. Uh, no picture of a big fancy house. Uh, Cause actually what we did is we, when we after watching, like after reading the um, essentialism and watching the, the minimalist uh, documentary on Netflix, I realized it's like, I don't want to, well, I guess I could have a big house, but that's not really on my big list because I'm like, like who needs it? Like, <laughs> well, I, do, I want to do stuff. I want to, like, we're planning a trip to, to South Africa. We're planning to do, like, I want to do, like, I want to go skiing. Right. I want to do, I want to go golfing. And, and if I, like, if my house just sits there, I can, I guess it could sit there empty or people could come and stay at my house. Uh, so it's not saying that I don't want it. It's just not my board. I could achieve my goals and I could achieve my, I could achieve my dreams regardless of what kind of car I drive. Right. And it could be, you know, yeah. And it's the why. Okay, I want a fancy car. Why do you want that fancy car? Do you want that fancy car to impress other people? Or does it to impress you? Why? What is it about a $150,000 car that makes you want it? Yeah. You know, it's look at the why. And then you can put the car as long as you have evaluated why the heck you want it. If you want a 10,000 square foot house, why? What does it tell you about your needs? If you've got a great big house, who are you impressing? Or is it not to impress? What's it for? So those are all the things that I really try and beat down on people. Um, twice I went to the Dominican Republic and did help do retreats down there. And every day I took a different client to lunch. And the waiter in the restaurant came up to me at the end of the week, a different person every day. He said, what do you do? He says, every day you're here with a different person and every day they cry. <laughs> I said, that's what I do. <laughs> make people that's cry. <laughs> I make people cry because they're getting in touch with stuff that they had never considered before. So it's really so important for people to stop and consider. Yeah. All right. I, have, I wrote a question. Now I remember it. Uh, what's the... The power of doing retreats versus doing a workshop. Both are good for your business, 
but you've done both. So maybe just yeah. share with people that are building coaching practices or, or getting looking at doing, say, okay, do I do workshops? Do I do, do retreats? Do I do a bit of both? What is the power of doing a retreat where you get someone like out of the country or literally out of their daily lives for a chunk right. of time? So right. that's what I know it is, but share a little bit because you've done it. Share how much bigger bang or how much bigger shifts people get by doing retreats versus just doing a one day workshop. Right. Then I've been on, I've attended retreats. I've attended three retreats out of the country and a couple in the country and I've run some. Being away from your day to day life is so important wherever you are. If you're going to focus on something, focus on it. So if you are away from the country where the Wi-Fi is a little crummier, that's good because it will keep you away from your day to day life so much. You won't be texting while the speaker is speaking. You will be in a beautiful place to allow transformation to come to you more. Um, I just like you get to know people really well. If you I've been on two or three day or one week retreats, you really get to know the people you're with much better because you're together. You have fun. You're playing. You're learning. You're working. All of those things combined. Part of my dream is uh, eventually never to see snow again. <laughs> and so I intend to go to different places around the world um, every winter, a different place. I want to go and spend a winter in Thailand, one in Peru, one in Portugal, Greece, just a different place every year. And I've been saying that for five years. I'm going to do this. It was only recently I came to the thought. And while I am in each of those places, I am going to find a spiritual place in that area of the world and have a retreat. So I will be there and people can come join me because it's worth it. There's a spirit there to help them. One of the place, the close places I'd like to have a retreat is Concord, Massachusetts, because that's where Thoreau's Walton Pond was. That's where Ralph Waldo Emerson was. It's where they developed the concept of law of attraction which is a good basis. There are other laws and there's so much more to do like acting rather than just attracting. The word attract has the word act at the end. Use that. But so I want to do that. I want to go to different places and have retreats that are special to people. Really wanting to transform, really wanting to self actualize. Nice. <laughs> hey, I love it. I, I love just sitting back and uh, people say, why do I do this? And I was like, I just get to sit back and listen. I, I, I'm just like a viewer right there. I, you had me, uh, you had me, you had me in like this. Here's my credit card that just signed me up. Let's go. Um, <laughs> and, Where would uh, you like to go? Which oh. spiritual part of the world would really speak to you, Dwayne? Hmm. You know, it's, it's, inter it's an interesting question. Uh, I know we have plans, I'm not sure if it's spiritual. I know we have plans like next October, we're, we're heading to South Africa. Uh, yes. Probably next fall, we're looking at um, uh, Air, um, Sedona, Arizona. You know, I had, uh, I haven't, I am still very new in my spiritual. So it's to look up to say what has, you know, spirit versus spiritual versus uh, just natural um Natural mm -hmm. energy, you know, energy, na natural energies to the um, on the planet. So they have that um, that wave. I've seen images of it, that wave formation in, in Arizona and Sedona with like the red rocks. And you just see this as where like the what, whether it's water or what has made that it is. Um, yes, it looks amazing. amazing. I have not been to Sedona, but it looks. Yeah. Amazing. So that's that's definitely on the on the do list. Um and we'll have to do some other things. Like I'm sure, like um, even like Scotland and Ireland, like, you know, go see Stonehenge. Like, 
yeah. it's like some weird stuff. Like some just rocks. Like like uh, I have a colleague, uh, one of our business partners, Scott Patton. You know, he's he's traveling the world, so he's you know he's in Egypt right now, showing pictures of like beside the pyramids, and he's like holding his hands up. He's like got the pyramids. He's got yeah. the pyramids in each hand, and it's really um, so. Go see some of that. Go he's see the Udemy that. guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know him. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Sounds well, like, and she and that's that's she's thing. going to Arizona on the twenty third. So lucky, not lucky, but wow, Tara, good for you. Tara's nice, Tara. on her way to to Arizona this month. Um, nice. Um, cool. All right. Uh, what do you need? If people are watching. If someone's like. You know, we always love more clients. But what are you working on that you say if someone if someone has that expertise and you're and you're working on your your online platform or some other stuff, if someone had this special superpower skill, this mm-hmm. skill set, profession, you know, this expertise, what would you what are you looking for help on? I am looking for help on expanding my business through collaboration. I really love working with other people. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, I have been speaking with a few people about doing things in collaboration. So I'm going to be working with Jen and Amy on content. I am talking with Rosa Locasing about who was on here recently. Yeah, Rosa's Um, a good friend of mine. Yeah. So Rosa and I are going to do some uh, seminar work together next year. We're figuring out. Um, Mandana Etarzeda, uh, she Mm -hmm. and I are talking about doing a women's retreat again next uh, August, I believe, down at the castle in Port Dover where we had the women's retreat. Yeah, I I had a number of colleagues go on that trip. Haunted Castle. Now, hey, let's, let's have a quick chat about that. Like, what kind of people go on a retreat to a haunted castle? Like, really? Well, it's interesting because I know the castle quite well. It's fabulous. If you like Downton Abbey or the Great Gatsby, it's that kind of place. So wonderful. I know the owner. It's got vortexes on the land, so it is spiritual rising there. But we brought Jen Abra along, who is, as a coach, who is a medium. Hmm. and. Jen Abra was so distracted with the number of spirits that live in that castle. <laughs> and so she she did um, a couple of sessions with us to channel that. And I had not believed in speaking with people in my past before. It was something I had not allowed myself to believe. I had not opened myself to it. And since I met Jen and was at the castle, I've spoken to my late sister three times. And I'm like, oh, wow, amazing. So, yes, it, um, uh, the focus to me of the castle is not necessarily the spirits, although they were clearly there and affecting people. Uh, but it is a lovely, quiet space close to Toronto that uh, – most people know Port Dover from who if they're around Toronto for Friday the thirteenth on motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's other stuff there too. So Wonderful. I'm looking forward to going back for another retreat at the castle. All right. Maybe we'll have to talk to Mora about having a field trip down there with our color mirrors people. That would be Oh, you know what? Um yeah. my group of well, both the coaches for the retreat and the co- and the coaches for a thing we did last year called Project Blueprint, which I did dream building for entrepreneurs, how to design their business. Mm. Um, our favorite thing was to take a day and go do a day of planning down it. It's called Clonmel Castle. If you want the information, let me know. Message me and I'll give you the information. But so if anyone, your original question is what I want people to help me with. Hi, Vish is to, I'd like to collaborate more with people. I'd like to add dream building to more things. If you're working on a seminar, a retreat, a coaching program, and you'd like people to get past their fear, to believe in what they're doing, let's talk and see if there's a way we can collaborate. Because I enjoy doing that. I like working with other people on creating projects. 
All right. I think I'm going to have to have you back on the Calm Cafe because I'll be honest, you are getting the most reaction of like any of my most recent guests. No offense hey. to the people that have been on here previously. It's not a competition, but I'm just telling you most engagement, most comments, most like wows, like hearing about spiritual and, and talking with uh, our, our spirit. So we're definitely getting the most interaction today. So maybe you'll have to be like a monthly guest here on the show because uh, that would be fun. Because that's also what, we, what I, we do here at Communications for Results is actually leveraging other people to show them how you can use Facebook and, and, and podcasting to help promote and, and just get their message out. And the best way to do it is do it collaboratively because no one wants to just listen to the like one person talk about themselves. It's really nice to be to be interviewed. It's fun interviewing people because I just I didn't have we had about like I'll show my notes like I had about that much scripted, and all that was was money, car, and house, and corporate trainer was all that was written down and your website, and that's all that was written down. People, I'll I'll be very transparent. That was the extent of our. Um, and you can really have a lot of fun having guests on that just have some real, just without really, we had an idea of what we wanted to talk about, but without really, like it wasn't scripted and hey, we're going to no. do this. Yeah. Now, the, the fun thing is you, you have some stuff coming up in the new year, but we don't, nothing, like, there's no, so we're not like selling any workshops or anything today. Um, I guess the main thing is I put your, I put the website on, people can see in the notes right. to go to never too late coaching.com. And then you shared, uh, to do this forward slash workbook. Um, yeah. now how does, how can someone get your book? So I have a book. I have my copy. Right. I'm keeping it. They can, they cannot have my copy. I'm keeping this one for me yeah. because the really cool thing people is it's, it's, I gotta figure out how my camera works here. It's a workbook. So I, I work in it. I'm not going to give this to someone for, so they can, because it will have my, it's okay to share your dreams, but it'll have my stuff in it. Right. So, but that's why there is the, uh, the PDF workbook as mm -hmm. well. So there's okay. more. So how do I, how does someone get one of these? Is it on your website, on Amazon? Where do we send on, them? On my website thus far, you can, my, uh, there's a email slot there to get a book, or you can email me at heather at never too late coaching dot com um or you can message me my facebook page has twenty seven thousand followers on it and that's if you go to facebook.com forward slash dream builder coach that is my facebook page wow okay how did you how did you get how did you get so many friends well, I will honor Mike Schreier on that because mm -hmm. Mike Schreier is the Facebook guru and I did what he said and it worked. And I stepped fast fear and lack of believing that I could possibly do it. Well, how long did it take you? Not long at all. Um, really, once I started working on it, uh, six months. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, yeah. Did, you, did you spend a little bit of money? A little bit. Yeah. Not, not a lot of money. No, but we'll be honest. Like it, it wasn't yeah. free because sometimes wasn't free. you get it, you get it to a certain level. It's it, 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 I did other. some boosting and ads, yeah, to mm -hmm. get it up there. But you know, I've got one. I'll give you a tip as far as getting your friends because Mike says get your friends and then work on you know getting them to like your page, which mm -hmm. works. One thing people don't know if they want to increase their friends, and this worked for me brilliantly, is join groups. Mm -hmm. So there's a dream builder coach group that a private group Mary Morrissey has. I went, she's got 5,000 people in that group. I just went through and invited them all to be my friend. You know, it's. How many, how many friends, how many friends on your personal page do you have? Well, I just had to delete some. So I'm at 4,990. Okay. So you've, you've capped out. So, 5, so that's the, and that, I know Mike talks about that. So the, the key is to get the, the friends and then and do it, do it like authentically and do it respectfully like don't go like liking like someone who you have no who has no reason to to do anything with right. you uh right. but and then and then the idea is once you have a certain you know once you have a certain number there a certain math just says a portion of those or a percentage of those are going to like your business page or your your facebook page and again if you're sharing good stuff like don't if you're not if you're not just selling at them every five minutes if you're selling good stuff and good content, like who wouldn't want to learn how to dream? Um, mm -hmm. Then 
there's going to be a natural progression of people over there. And then once you hurt a certain limit, then spend the boosting and then you get a better bang for your dollar. And that is that we've just kind of spilled the beans on Mike's program. Doesn't mean that you, you learned it all. You still, it's great to connect with Mike. And he'll he'll share it with you. Uh, I had him on the podcast on, on here, and he shared that with us. And I need to. Um, I haven't done it for myself. Yet. I'll be honest. I haven't done. I have not done that with for myself yet. Um, I need We're, to talk to Mike because I actually have about three or four Facebook pages, and I keep trying to figure like jump between that. Which one? Which one do I focus on first? Um, so I'm gonna. Have a, figure have a out your why you're doing it. Figure out who your <laughs> target audience is. I wrote that down. I wrote that down. Yeah. I wrote it down because I, I have the book. And actually, I was thinking about that when I when you were saying that because I started to work on the book. And then um, we've actually come back to say that the my book's going to be – no, it's not about me, but I can share a little bit about me. Um, I think I've I've earned enough time. You're not done yet. We're not done with you yet, but I'll share a little bit about me. Um, so I've started the book, and then we're trying to say, okay, is it for this or this? And then really it's going to be pushed back probably to more the, to the millennial or to the younger because it's about money and, and you know, a guide to money. So I'm like, mm-hmm. it's older people can uh, sometimes some of the concepts, it's not too late, but it is later, uh, you know, compound interest as an example. Yes, it, you can still grow your money, but let's be honest at um, – I'll be honest. So if you were my if you were my client, I'd said, you know, Heather, we can still grow your money, but we gotta ram it up a bit because the you still got twenty, you know, twenty, thirty years to go, but you don't have fifty years to go. Right. Uh, so if I have someone who's twenty years old, I said, listen, you put a dollar in today at twenty, by the time you're eighty or by the time you're seventy, it's it's turned a couple times. Sure. So so the book is more for younger it's going to be more for younger people but older people can still read it and it's going to be sort of that simple guide of you know because as we say just like your book should be in schools because hey they're not teaching how kids how to dream they actually put you in like send you to the office if you're daydreaming they said daydreaming is bad i'm like daydreaming there should be a course like hell we, we have a course in, every, in high school for everything else why not a course in daydreaming or, mm-hmm. or like dreaming for your for what for your life um, just like we should have more courses around money and not, not for this financial literacy crap. I'll be honest. Um, uh, we don't need more things about how to amortize a mortgage. Um, half this ge- next generation doesn't, won't even own a mortgage probably because they can't afford a house. So let's not worry about amortizing a mortgage. Let's show them that, Hey, a credit card is good, uh, but it also is not so good if you don't pay. Yeah. yeah. That's, sure. that's my quick rant. Um, if people are still watching, uh, I think we've lost most of the people now. I've, I've chased them all away because they, they were no longer hearing about dreams. But hey, if you want a partnership with with me and Heather, Heather will help you dream. We'll put some numbers to the dream board, and then I will we'll work together on how to fund those dreams and make that them would be amazing. become that would reality. Be amazing collaboration. Yeah. We want them to be reality. It's like not just put up a dream board and like, oh, I'm going to build another one next next year. I'll build another. No, it's like, let's take some steps to build your business to figure out how to get it done. Exactly. Because getting it done is what it's all about. I think it's I stole just- that from my friend Hannah. Um, hers is get her done marketing. Um, mm-hmm. No, we're not. Get her done. Get so true. it going hey and we're in a perfect timing because we're just about ready to roll into the new year of 2018 friends exactly and, and if what people want to help to... us kick off what they're wanting to do get in touch with me i would love to talk there to go. you there we go. i'll give anyone who is listening right now i will give anyone a one hour free session if they would like to talk to me about their plans their dreams their whys and their whats for 2018 all right. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you. It's been so much fun. And uh, yeah. Love you. We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.